Welcome to Life is Spiritual Presents Real Life Testimonies. My name is Baba Zion, and I'm here as usual with my beautiful, gorgeous wife, Mama Zoe. Erika Mukisakimani, a.k.a. Mama Maisha, or Mami Zion and Zef. Amen. And today we have a wonderful guest, and we shall allow her to introduce herself before we pray. Yes. Hello. Praise God. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Joy. Joy Wairimu. Yes. I'm from Kiambo County. Wow. You're welcome, Joy. My mother in love is called Eunice Wairimu. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yes. All right. So before we get started, let's start with a word of prayer. Abba Father, Yahuwah our Elohim, we honor you. We give thanks for the gift of life. We give thanks for the opportunity to share testimonies because your word declares we overcame the enemy by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And we loved not our lives unto death. And so as the word proceeds and as the testimony proceeds, Holy Spirit, we pray that we would come under your government, that you would assist us to edify, encourage, inspire, embolden, Anyone who might be listening, who might be going through life's ups and downs and really needs to hear this word so that they may know they're not the only ones going through these things. We pray that Yeshua may be glorified and that the church may be edified and encouraged. We apply the blood of Yeshua over every soul, spirit, soul, and body. There shall no evil befall them, neither shall any plague come near their dwelling. May you bless this broadcast Abba Father. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. So, Joe, you're welcome. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, please feel free to share. Yeah. Yes. Thank so you so much. So, Joy and what is Joy doing and why is she doing what she's doing? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you once again yes. for hosting me. Yes, you're welcome. Um, I'll start from uh, where I came from. Joy is, uh, was brought up in Baker wow. by her grandmother. Mm. So I was that uh, child who was spoiled. I wouldn't yes. say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I went through primary school in Baker. And uh, I had asthma attack. So Sorry. I found that uh, my age mates finished school two years before me. So by the time I was going to high school, you see, I was brought up by my grandmother. My mom left me when I was four months. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, she's not dead. <laughs> yeah. She just left. So when I went to high school, um, I used to, my, there's an uncle of mine who used to pay for my school fees. And uh, when I was going to form two, he passed on. So now I was left. It was me and my grandmother. And then after after that, it was a form two, second term. And then she transferred me to a school in Daguriti, where it's called Hidden Talent. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, that school mostly we used to, yeah, we used to sports and music, so education was not much into it. It was like a rehab. Oh. Yeah, so I stayed there for from form two and from day from three. Then one of the teachers there came and told me, Hey, you know, Joy, if you continue being here, your future will be bad because we were not focused on education. We used to wake up, go to games, music, you know. So I went okay, home. focusing on talent. Yes, it's okay. hidden talent. Oh, okay. and, and for our Western <laughs> audience, Form 2 and Form 3 is like, uh, probably like the 10th and 11th grade. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I came back. I asked my grandmother to change. And then she was like, you go there, find a school, and then come tell me. I went to a school in Dika. And then, um, no, I mean Form 3 that time. Yeah. Now when I come, they can't take me to Form 4 because of my uh, performance. So I was taken back to Form 2. Oh, no. That's, um, and um, 
I finished school uh, in 2009. And uh, around 2010, March, I found a job in Thika, in these architectural firms, you know, where they design houses. Yeah. Now, I've been a girl who has been all her life. She was, uh, my grandmother was very harsh. She used to beat me so much. And now I'm, I'm just out there. Oh, I've wow. fini yes, I've finished uh, uh, school. And then... My friends are two years earlier. Yeah. You know, for them, they have experience of the world. So that's why I started drinking, loving, and I started meeting married men. Uh -huh. That's how life started. And um, at, uh, uh, on 2014, I got pregnant by a married man. I got my baby on November, October, I mean. And then on December, the wife knew, so this guy had to leave me. Okay, so... She found out. She found out. Yeah, she found out that um, we had an affair. So How did she find out? A friend of mine, a friend of mine gave her photos of my kid. And oh. then when their husband went home and then he was asked, this is your kid? And he, he said, yes, actually he didn't deny, but now the problem was, Joy, how did my wife got the photos? Yeah. I mean, she believed that, uh, he believed that I'm the one who has sent the photos to the wife. To break his marriage. Yeah. Okay. So that's how I was left. And um, I started doing something called, um, you know, errands where you go, you do such, you know, those jobs. Around 2017, I got a job in one of the companies in Westlands. And uh, the same same friend mm -hmm. set me up. From 2014, I've not seen my baby daddy mm. to 2017. So it happened that uh, this company, it, it, it's uh, from uh, one of the friends from my baby daddy. Okay. They are friends. The owner of this company and my baby daddy are friends. So this lady is still working here. So one time she asked me, oh, let's go out. We went to TRM and uh, she called my baby daddy. You know, there was that thing of, why did you leave me? Why did you do this? You know, for me, it was my first time to see him. This lady had to leave me there it was almost morning we we, <laughs> we stayed up to morning so this lady has to, had to leave me there and then she went to the office to report where she had left me so i got fired <laughs> <laughs> yes and she uh, set you up <laughs> yes <laughs> she's always setting her up yeah so i got fired i and that's where life started because i became depressed and I started something called prostitution. And um, <laughs> it's not the prostitution that people go on the road, on the, uh, the, koin the koinange, the, yes. those things. No. What we used to do, there are people who have invested in um, Airbnbs. Okay. So they have connection with uh, rich men and ladies. Okay. So uh, I would send my photo there. And uh, when a man asks for a lady, uh, he'll be sent the photos. The one he's going to choose is the one he's going to get. Yeah. So it was nice because once it had privacy, no one would know. It was a flat, so even if you're going in, no one would know. So you can even go in with a long dress and then you change when you're there and then you come out. I did that for some time. I was introduced by a friend. And then this same friend, I used to say that uh, at the end of the night, she's getting more money than I could get. And uh, that's when I, I asked her, what, she, what is she doing that I'm not doing? You no, know, we are doing the same job, the hours are the same, but you can find her with 30,000, 50,000 from one man. Mm -hmm. So that's when uh, I was introduced to witchcraft. 
Yes, because uh, uh, she told me there are powers which people use that um, when you get those powers, you can get any kind of money you want from a man. Okay. And uh, I became interested, you know. I asked her to take me to where they get those powers. And then she told me she can't give me because um, she can't share an altar. Like, because we are friends, she can't share. It's going to backfire on her. So I had to look for my own altar. Um, I went to internet. Uh, there are posters all over. But she sent me to a friend who was using and then she stopped. So I was connected to one of them. And I went in Nairobi. I was given those um, uh, love potions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, wow. Where, where, okay, love where did potions. you go in Nairobi? What What did it look like? What? The the place. Mm. Uh, it was just a, a one bedroom. So there's a sitting room where people sit, where well, the waiting area, and then the bedroom is where the the altar is. Um, it's not as scary as we see in Nigeria movies. It was just, for him, for his house, it wasn't that scary because uh, they just had uh, those white and black and red uh, curtains. Okay. And then so many, those uh, spices. And for me, what uh, he did to me, hey, like spices, like, like those, uh, ingredients or like yes, those ingredients. containers. No, those are uh, uh, those Calabar. potions. Those are like, potions. No, okay. with uh, oh, no, they were with somewhere with papers, and uh, for the just on the on the ground. Yes, on the ground, and then for the those are uh, traditional. They're called calabash. Uh, calabash. Yes. They were like uh, three or four. Three or four calabashes. Yes, and uh, for those that don't know, a calabash yeah. might be like. It's shaped like this container on the ground. I mean, on the mm. bottom, but at the top, it has a bottleneck. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But okay. it's those ancient African ones, those uh, wooden. I think it's some kind of wood, something like that. Yeah, and then uh, they had uh, those, uh, you know, the traditional, you know, the Kikuyu traditional pots. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the traditional pots, the ones they use for cooking. The, yeah. Oh, the one, okay. uh, the 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 one they make out of clay. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. had those, mm. and then um, jiko, jiko. The okay. The normal. Jiko. It's like a small stove, charcoal stove. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, the okay, charcoal okay. one. Okay. So what he did when I entered, I was told to remove all the clothes, and then uh, on that uh, stove, he had to put some herbs like a mixture of them. And then I was told to squat on it, mm. the the smoke. Um, and then he had to cover me with the Maasai vessel. Okay. Yeah, so I had to inhale that. The smoke. It was a Kikuyu man? Or it's like it was the like, incense. What did he look like? And he's, um, uh, the Nini, the, what do you call them? Swahili. A Swahili yes, guy. Yes, and uh, it was Swahili and Kamba. So. Looking like the Muslims, kind of. Yeah, he was a Muslim. He was a Muslim. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that is what I did. And then when you inhale that smoke, it's supposed to cleanse you. Mm. Like it's supposed to remove bad vibes. You know, it's supposed to make you uh, like a, look like a gold, you know. Okay. It's supposed to make you get attract. Uh, you attract men. So, after that, I was given uh, uh, some powder to put on my lotion, mm. and uh, another perfume, small perfume, the Indian one. You know, the, the small ones. Yes. Those ones I was given. But uh, when I was in that, uh, when I was in uh, inhaling that smoke, I had to speak what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I had to say what I want. Um, my name is Joy. They use the the mutual name because they believe that is your name. Okay. So I had to use Wairimo. 
I want this when I go to work. I want to attract rich men. I want rich men to see me. I want them to give me what I want. No one would ever hurt me. You know, you speak what you want. And then uh, business was successful, I would say, because uh, it... <laughs> Yeah, I think so. yeah, yeah, they were working for me, so I continued with that. I was going there, I was using those things, and I was getting money. Mm. So in that so time, so it was working. You <laughs> saw a you saw a clear difference between before and after. Yes, I would get money a lot. Like I would go with somebody and get around thirty thousand, forty thousand. Like, so okay. what happened? Is, okay, as soon as you left that, um, the shrine, Being you had close to pay. To the mic. Yeah. No. You, it was no, free? No, he, he tells you, you go, you'll come back. Oh. Because you have to go back. And and keep paying him or? Yes. But uh, for the first time, I think it's to entice you to go back. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. So he did he not tells, charge you the first time? No, he told me you just go. When you succeed, you'll come back. So, mm. um, when I went back to business, it was good. I used to get money. I was to get uh, whatever I didn't get, now I'm getting higher. And that time, even if I would go to a club, I would go sit down and then I would somebody would spot me from afar and then they would leave the table and come to me. Wow. Yes. So that's what, how I was operating. Okay, then are there situations when uh, you would want, you would fall in love with your clients and now you want to keep them? No. Okay, so uh, what uh, if you wanted them to come back? <laughs> because, because they are paying well. Uh, no, because it's business. Um, you know, uh, he had given me rules. He mm -hmm. told me if I need uh, one person, a permanent person, mm -hmm. I go there. And then he'll give me for a permanent. But uh, for this one, they were just for tonight. And then tomorrow, even if you meet me, you can't remember me. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's how it was working. So now, because it was working for me, we had a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we created a rapport. So we would with the, talk. With, with this, the, Yes. With, with that. <laughs> With, what do you call him? Uh, is he a, the spirit, her spiritual oh. father? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my altar. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we had a relationship. That is, um, I would go clubbing, and then he would call me and tell me, the man who is who is sitting next to you has money. Okay. Yeah. The man you're going to meet is sick. That is the kind of a relationship we had. Like, mm. he would tell me, he would guide me. But um, the way he's guiding me, it's also the way he's knowing how much I'm earning. Mm. So the following day, he'll just call and tell me. Uh, they, they called them babus. Babu. Yeah. Babu means grandfather, which is just the same way they're As called Jaja. in Uganda. Jaja. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Grandfather. He, he would <laughs> tell me, Babu and Ataka. So you would send like 10% off. Or more of what you've gotten. Wow. 10%. Yes, tithe. or more. <laughs> it was tithe. It was tithe. <laughs> it wasn't, uh, for them, it's more than tithe because you have to do it like uh, tithe, almost often, daily. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we continued with him and then it reached a time I told him, I just want one person now. And he told me, you just go find one man and then come. Okay. I'll make him yours. And of course, you don't find a single guy who is loaded. Mm. So <laughs> you look for a married man. And whoever was, whoever that time. So many single guys are not loaded. <laughs> 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 it's the married men that are loaded. <laughs> There's yeah. a grace that comes with uh, marriage and provision that, yeah. 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 And that's what, they're, that's what the enemy is I hope the, the single men are learning <laughs> and the married men are also learning. <laughs> yes. Because the married men are the target and yeah. the single men also need to marry so that they have that grace. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, a married man will give you more than a single guy. A married man is not so fully committed into you. 
so I'll be able to do my things, you know. So I found one, and um, the instructions were I should sleep with him, and then um, I go back there. So sleeping with him is a covenant. Uh, yes, a covenant because of the DNA. Yes, you know. So I had to sleep with him, and then I went there. When I went there, he had to be checked. <laughs> Wait a minute. He had to be checked for what? <laughs> and how and what, did they And how did you get DNA? <laughs> DNA is... Uh, no, I didn't... Uh, sleeping with him is making sure you have um, uh, contact with him. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've slept with him without a condom. Okay. Yeah, so um, uh, I have a covenant with, with him. him. Yeah. Yes. So when I go there to my altar... This covenant will speak on my yes. behalf. Yes. Okay. So I went there. Uh, they check the family. Mm -hmm. They check the wife. Actually, mostly they check the wife, the kids, if he has protected himself, because even men protect themselves. Yeah. And Meaning from uh, the shrine, he could see everything that was going on in this man's home. Yes. This Babu could see his wife, his children, everything that was going on in the house. Actually, they see to a level that they tell you, this guy, the wife is not even prayerful. This guy, mm. the mother is prayerful. Was, you see, wives don't pray for their husbands, especially the husbands who have a social life, like they go clubbing and drinking. Wives don't pray for them. So it's very easy for a lady to catch that man. Mm. Because that man is not even protected by anything. He has no yeah. protection. Yes. And some of them, the mothers pray. The mothers pray, hey. but uh, wives don't. Uh, and now I'm assuming, you know, at some instances you'll be told, because I've taken several, you'll be told this guy, the mother is prayerful, but the mother is dead. But she was so prayerful that she protected that the home. Son. Yeah. You, we could even take a pastor. And when they check, they say, ah, this is nothing. It's easy to get. <laughs> <laughs> so they are checked how uh, they have protected their money because it's money you want. So if he has protected his money, you can't get his money. Um, and then from there, you're given those uh, herbs. You can be given for putting in the tea, uh, putting in the food, and uh, putting on yourself. So, it goes to stage, uh, stages. So, first I was given uh, the herbs to put on his tea. And um, you're told to prepare masala, tea masala, tangawizi, you know, that smell. Yeah. Because the ones of that this, have uh, uh, Yes. So, yeah. he can't tell. He can't, can't tell. Taste. Yeah. Uh, you can also use it on an egg. Mm -hmm. He can't tell. He can't tell. So I gave it to him and it worked. So it was nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you mean it so worked? He, she gave it to <laughs> the married he man. He started cleaving to you. Yes. And, and, yeah. and doing whatever you demanded. Basically. Yeah. You see, when I was there in that altar, I would speak what I want. Okay. okay. I would say, uh, my, my, my name is Vairimo and I'm calling you, Kamal, to be my guy. I want to be your manager. I want to be your flower. I want you to go home and see your wife as nothing. I want you to take care of me. I want you to take care of any. You say anything, and whatever you're going to say, it's going to work. Life and death are in the power of, <laughs> of the, the tongue. tongue right? And then we always advise women to pray because it's prayer that keeps your marriage. Because now <laughs> the, the woman is see, on the altar telling your man to look at you like trash. <laughs> you see how life revolves around altars and yeah. covenants? Mm -hmm. You know, life is spiritual. <laughs> you know what happens? Eh? But thank one... you for sharing this. And I we don't want anybody that is watching to judge she's sharing what she used to do so that she can help yes yeah somebody uh, takes a lot of courage to, save to do marriage. That. that's so awesome y yes yeah uh uh there's one thing we learned there an altar can speak on you on your behalf yes so let me 
see when I was doing that eh, mm. when I went uh, when I go to that altar I don't just go with a thousand bob I go with maybe 10,000 or 20,000 mm. now the wife in the house the wife of the house uh, even let's assume she's a pastor when mm. she goes to church she's going to to offer 50 bob 50 <laughs> shillings mm-hmm. or 100 shillings mm-hmm. which altar is going to speak the one it's, where there's course. more sacrifice, more dedication, more, more dedication commitment. More commitment. Yes, that's how it used to work. So I continue. And they don't even pray. They only go to church on Sunday and the man will prophesy. <laughs> and after he has prophesied, they'll go back home and live their lives. Wow. Yeah. So um, that's how. And then the business was good. I used to have someone and then for some time I would drop them because for me I didn't want it to be permanent. Mm. And then the more you're advancing, the more you have a relationship with this doctor, the more he's advancing the those drugs on you. Mm. So at some moment I had a big fish. Mm-hmm. You had a, a big, big fish. fish is a rich loaded oh, guy. Okay. Yeah, he's a big <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> men are being fished. <laughs> Jita said, I will make you fishers of men. <laughs> I wish I've been fishing them into the kingdom. Yeah. Yes. But now the world is also fishing. So Yes. Yeah. And there's a, the scripture there's a scripture that says that um the agents will hunt for the precious life. They hunt. Yes. You know, they hunt. He has a bright destiny. He has mm, hey. they check it to see it how he's doing, yeah. if he's got money, if he's a boss. Uh huh. Yeah. Aha, uh-huh. tell us the big <laughs> fish. You. Uh-huh. How so did you, you had find a big this fish. big fish? How big of a fish was he? <laughs> uh, it was big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the big fishes are watching. <laughs> um, we met in a club. Um, a person would see me and then he would come to me. Mm. You know, and then you can sense how he is with the kind of alcohol he's taking mm-hmm. the labels yeah uh-huh. the car his dr- suv his dr- <laughs> mercedes hammer <laughs> how he's talking how he's treating you there's a way they talk and there's a way they treat someone so i called my prophet and then i told him this is i uh, saw so i found this guy and then he told me come uh, let me advance some drugs i was given some drugs to put two two kind of them eh? and uh, one was to put on myself and i know i know many have gone through this and this is the part that people hate me when i talk about this but people a lot of men have gone through this part um you take a liver the the meat liver meat liver mm-hmm. Yeah. Of an animal. Yes. Like cow? Like a cow. Yeah. Any, yeah. but it's a liver. And then you put a small portion of it in your private parts. It has to slip there. Okay, so we can speak on the mic. <laughs> these people don't need to miss this point. Yeah. You, say, you said you get a liver? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you a portion of it, you put mm-hmm. it on your private part. Mm-hmm. And then... In the uh, in the morning, you shave your armpit and your mm-hmm. private part. No, this is the lady mm-hmm. doing this. And then when you do that, uh, you're supposed to take uh, that those that hair. You put it in a hot pan. When you put hair in a hot pan, it melts. Yes, not uh, not melting. It becomes like flour. Uh, unga. Yes, like, unga unga. Like flour. Okay. Yes. So you put that. One maini, the one mm-hmm. the liver which was inside, you put it in that uh, uh, hair, mm. and then you use the drugs that you're given there, and then you feed the man. No, you're going to cook the other maini, the other livers, but uh, on his plate you're going to put this one. And you will feed him with that. You one. make sure he has eaten. Honey, let me feed you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yes. Men who like to sleep around, or <laughs> yeah, yeah sure, mm. save you. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. so that's how that was. Uh, that one is very strong. 
because uh, that one will make him even forget his home. Yeah, because there are women who have come for counseling and their husbands have forgotten about them. They've uh, even moved. They come picking things and, and going. Mm -hmm. That is the one which you're going to hear women telling you that uh, my husband calls me a witch. Mm -hmm. That is the kind that you'll see that your husband is not hiding the mistress anymore. Yes, he can even come with her in the house. Yeah, that is strong. Yani, yeah. It makes you as a man, you forget your family and everything and you focus on this other side. That is the one which makes even men sell their properties for, yes. for a lady. Yeah. And uh, that one is a combination of another one. He gave me something called uh, Majini. Okay. Majini, spirits. Majini is, spirits. Yes. Is, is, I think that's the Swahili word for the jinn. And a jinn is a spirit. Yeah, it's a demon. It's an evil spirit. Mm. So, uh, this uh, spirit, uh, I used to wake up at 3 a.m. And I go outside. Now, you remember, uh, in my altar, I've talked, I've spoken, I've said what I want. You've so, programmed. Yes. Mm. No, when I go home, it's just like the way you go to a, the hospital and then you take take away drugs. Mm -hmm. So everything I wanted, I, I just did there yeah. in my altar. So when I go home, I'll just put that uh, spirit on my heart and then I go outside, I talk to them. Okay. I will just go at three. Yeah. You would put spirit on your hand. Yeah, they are They're on objects. Oh, uh, yes, they are unga like. Uh -huh. The spirits yeah. you see travel on objects. Are, yeah. Yes, them to be, it can attach itself mm, to an inanimate it, object. Yes, yeah. So you would go outside and then I'll say, Joy, my rainbow, all in you come out. I want by 10, I want you to be here and I want you to give me what I've asked for. And then I'll send it. I send you to go and get him for me. Okay, like you tell him, I need you to buy me an apartment. Yeah. I don't care how you get it. Yeah. I need it by four. Mm. And the man will <laughs> <Yes>. move. <laughs> yeah, it, it commands. The spirits, they go out there and then they will bring him to you. Mm. Yeah, so that's how I survived. But all through, I didn't know that uh, when I was doing this, I was gaining more power than the doctor who was treating me. Okay. So at this point, he told me, I can't treat you anymore. Because you're becoming dangerous. I'm more powerful than, than him. him. Mm. And then he told me to look for another altar, a big altar. And um, I struggled for some time because I used to find scams, scams, scams. You know, when you go to those people, when you start using this, those things and then you stop, they make you poor. Mm -hmm. They make you want to go back. They yeah. give you rejection. They give you negativities of life. They give you sickness. So you want to go back. Mm. You know? So I tried uh, Tanzania. Uh, da. And I found uh, a man who had it. Uh, he was strong for him. But uh, when I reached there, he told me I'm supposed to be one of them. Like, if I would say something, I mean, it would work. Yes. Instead of depending on them. If I want to cast something, if I want to bless something, it is going to work. So, when I went there, uh, I was still, I had still gotten a big fish. I wanted to. <laughs> had another big fish. <laughs> yeah, you know, in wow. your mind, that's what you want to do now. Yes. Because yeah. even if you try to work, I tried properties, but when you try to sell something, a client is telling you, yeah, I'll, I'll go to pay. I'm going to the bank. And then all of a sudden, it yeah, backfires. It, yeah. You get a miscarriage of that uh, product, everything. Didn't so work so that you go back to the other work. Yes. Okay. And then I came to realize that um, th uh, those people don't are not supposed to work. That's why it was happening to me. Yeah. Which people are the not supposed to work? The prostitutes and so the things. doctors. So, oh. so uh, he told me I'm supposed to be one of them. Okay. Oh, so, so you're not supposed to work. You're supposed to treat people, and people give you money. That's right. how they work. Okay. 
So when I went to Tanzania, I stayed there for three days. And for there, I had to be cleansed again. Because they are, he has to remove this altar for me to work on his altar. Okay. <laughs> yes. Now, um, for him, he washed me with uh, beach water, uh, rain water, and uh, borehole water. We used three kind of waters. And then uh, we slaughtered chicken. There were three. And then, you know, before it was slaughtered, it was supposed to accept you. Like, you know, a live chicken is being put on your head and then you're supposed to walk around mm -hmm. and then it's not supposed to move so that you can be accepted. If it flies away, you're not accepted, but it has to stay there. So... This is outside in a compound or in a, inside of a room? Yeah, he had a standalone, so we were just outside the compound. Okay. It was just him and uh, two workers. So it worked for me. I think even the Satan had accepted me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have a so, brother who tried, to, who tried to perform a ritual and the demons rejected him. <laughs> the demons rejected him. He tried. He tried. The demons did not accept him. <laughs> no, they, they accepted me because the, the three chickens, just they were just there. Mm. And uh, in this altar, I used uh, nails and hair. No, they used the DNA. So after some time I came back, but it was so unfortunate that uh, this guy, my my now my new prophet, la liked me. Okay. Romantically. Mm -hmm. So when I came back, he he used to monitor me. They monitor people. Yeah. So he used to monitor me and he used to see the the uh, the sponsor that I had taken there. I'm sleeping with him and he doesn't want that. Okay. So uh, after some time, I was left by this guy. So I know it's that guy who made it happen because nothing happened. This guy just blocked me. So I knew it's that guy. Now, this guy used to come. Like at night, I would have, uh, I would wake up when I'm wet. Okay, the witch doctor would come at night. Yeah. In the spirit. Yes. Sometimes you would see like from it's Tanzania. a shadow. That one in yeah. Tanzania. Okay. Even the Isili one, they used to come. Mm -hmm. Like, but whenever they give you something, they take something from you. Yeah. So they, that's how they come. So you would, uh, you'll be sleeping and then you'd feel in your room there's someone and then you'd see a shadow. He would come as a guy, he would come as an old man. So even if you're in a, with a guy in the bed, you'll see there's somebody there and he's not happy. And then when you're done with your business, you'd see him go. But the man you're with, he uh, wouldn't see. So... That guy, after some time, he came to Kenya. He was um, even, uh, for him, he's uh, superior because uh, he's very known there. So he was making he's money. He's very well known in Tanzania. Yeah, he was making money, like, <clears throat> making money. I saw him making money, like, you give him a thousand, he gave you two thousand. Huh. So the kind of people he was making money for, they are family people. So he can't stay in their homes. So he had to come to my house. I had to host. And you don't have control because <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever he has done to you, you can't say no. So he just called and told me, I'll be in Nairobi at this time. Pick me up. Then I'm like, okay. So we went to my house. We stayed there. And then this is uh, what he used to do. Uh, these people would give him money, let's say like 200,000. Do those um, partitions, he would do those doings, and then he would put that money in these traveling bags. How, how did he look? Did this gentleman look like a uh, religion? Did he, how would he appear? 
He's a Muslim. And not the, so this other guy is also a Muslim. Oh, the the guys, uh, the customers. No, no, no the, the 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 babu from Tanzania, the oh. the grandfather or the witch, basically the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> the wizard from I mean, because this is another wizard, not this one from here in Nairobi. This yeah. is the other one in Tanzania from Dar es Salaam, and he was also Muslim. Yeah, he was a Muslim. He was on his 40s. He had six packs. He had tattoos. And he, it's just a normal man. A guy you can see on the road and then you can't resist. But, um, yeah, tall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when he came, he had clients from Kenya. So uh, he, you would give him like 200,000 or 300,000. Uh, he does those incantations and then he would place the money in the, these traveling bags. He would leave it in the room and then tomorrow morning, however, the, those baboos would love you. It's however, they'll give you money. So I can put 200, you put 200. I get 1 million, you get 10 million. It's how, it's how they are going to love you. And that I mean, work... You could put money into a bag and somehow these spirits would multiply it. Yes. And okay. uh, uh, those spirits, they are dead spirits. So that money has a condition. You're supposed to use it within seven days, 21, uh, 21 days, 14 days, however you're going to be told. But uh, after that time, the money disappears if you've not used, used all the it. money that's why you, so you see, can even use it to buy a car or to buy an apartment but you have to use it quickly yeah that's why you see so many uh, rich people they would buy a car and then two months they sell you know there's a lot of car businesses mm -hmm. which comes to money because um, car is easier you can buy an apartment I know some who have bought apartments in uh, Kitengela. So that's how it used to work. So by the time he stayed in my house and then he left, he went back. So we stopped communicating. Now I've reached a point in life that I'm even depressed. I'm even suicidal. I, I can't work. Nothing is working. You know, I decided to try in my tradition. Now I wanted to know what is happening. I went to the Kikuyu tradition men. And um, when I went there, actually it's around this area. When I went there, the first... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, very near. So, in the neighborhood. Yes. We are going to launch a <laughs> spiritual warfare attack on that shrine. I'll show you after this. Mm. Um, so when I went there, they actually told me I'm supposed to be one of them. And I go back home. I know where I've come from. So when I asked around, I was told that I was born with those three seeds. Three seeds. Yeah. These, these things Kikuyu are born with, they are called uh, Bogos. You've ever heard of them? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, they believe that if you're supposed to be, um, uh, they call them native doctor, uh, you're born with seeds. When you go a child, she's uh, holding them. Three. Okay. It's a it's a tradition. So I was told I was born with them, and then my great grandfather comes from Tanzania. Okay. And he was a witch doctor there. He came to here, and then he married a witch doctor. So I had that in me. But um, no, you can't just give birth to a kid and then you tell them you're supposed to be a witch doctor. You know. So this man, when you go there, first they tell you not to take alcohol. They tell you not to club, go clubbing. And then they give you a husband. 
um, an old man. I'm assuming he's around 60. This man got married on his 20s. The wife is a church person. You know, they got married in the church. And then this man, later in life, he realizes he's supposed to be uh, yeah, a Wait. native doctor. Mm. So when he realizes that, he needs a wife to support what he's doing. And he needs a wife with the same belief. Yes, and Unless the same. Unless two agree they cannot <laughs> work together. So that's how I was given an old husband. Uh, I was the third wife. I was supposed to. This man. Yeah. And so, he had one of his wives was Christian? So now and they then, gave him uh, wives who who believe in what he's doing. <laughs> the devil is a liar. <laughs> yeah, and then you, you're you supposed to get circumcised for you to go through that. The woman has to be circumcised. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> Did <laughs> you right. run? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I about the knife. <laughs> I just circumcised my son, so I know. <laughs> you talk about that, I'll run. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah, so I was supposed to bring a goat and then get circumcised. But um, I would say at that moment, it's the moment uh, I met with God. Glory to God. Hey, my sister was not <laughs> circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to cry. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, I have friends who have gone through it. Because that thing is serious. And the, uh, when I was there, when they were telling me my work, they used to tell me, they were telling me how I can heal, how I can curse, how I can bless. The same things I've been told. Mm. And um, even if I don't do it, I'm not going to be successful in life. Whatever I'm going to do, it won't work. And then... <clears throat> And I was seated there, the owner of that uh, compound, he was just walking. And then he said, if she doesn't want that, she can be a Christian. She, you know, he gave me another direction. Mm. I think for some reason, I would say, maybe God used him. Yeah. Because that's when I realized, if I go to this side, these things would stop. But by then, those people have even told me to stop going to church, you know, to stop reading the Bible. There are prayers I would pray. There are verses I would read. They will give you verses, but there is a level of prayers they tell you not to go. Mm. You know, they are, uh, if it's a Bible verse, they'll give you the shallow ones. Mm -hmm. Like, we have the power of the tongue, that's shallow. Mm -hmm. You know? But um, they don't not something, tell you... Not, not a verse that would no, bring you to repentance. They don't do that. They actually ask you not to go to church. They call Jesus son of prostitute. That's how they call Jesus, son of prostitute. So... At uh, that time, I was I went back, and then when I was just scrolling through my laptop, that's when I a man of God just popped up, and I called him. I got my deliverance. Amen. Yeah, I Amen. I went. I got born again. Hey, but let me tell you, that's when my problem started. I was yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting that. I was expecting That's that. That's when the war begins, the battle. What? Mm -hmm. That's when I, I would sit down and ask, Are you, is there a God? Because mm -hmm. I got born again. And then after um, I got born again at around March, on June, I gave out this testimony. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> let me tell you. I got rejection starting from my mother, from my grandmother. Everyone rejected, rejected me, even the landlord. 
even when I would go and visit my son in school, the teacher would give you rejection because the um, where I went, it it was so viral because it had like over six hundred viewership, six hundred thousand. So I was known. And then you know people when you see, and then you know somebody, you send it to a friend, and then it was a really hard time for me. But um, I fought. I would say I I fought, and uh, my church has been supportive. I went to. Bible school, it's, uh, it's in Machakos, but we have a branch in Nairobi. They usually, sometimes they come there, sometimes we go there. So that is how my <laughs> journey mm -hmm. as a Christian has been. How do you know that your man is under a love potion attack? Uh, when we talk of uh, witchcraft, I wouldn't talk of for uh, a man's side, I would say witchcraft, you can be given knowingly or unknowingly. So you find that guy is a, uh, that person has uh, depression, has isolation. Even if he goes out, he just wants to be alone. He en uh, they engage in alcoholism. Um, they feel rejected. You know, the way, the way, when you get born again, you get filled with the fruits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you go to this other world, you get the negativities of life. So yes. even at some times, you would feel like they send the monitoring spirit. There is a, a point where I said that uh, I used to communicate with my uh, witch doctor. So when I'm communicating with him, is also monitoring the family, the wife and the kids. Yeah. So so they monitor to see when the man is financially okay. Yes. That's, that's when now they strike. And when they are happy. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, when they are happy, you are told to go back and get more mm -hmm. to make him not become happy. Okay. To make him even not pay school fees. The, wife, the family miserable. Yes. You're, he's supposed to have uh, the wife on on the wife's side. The wife is supposed to be something that the husband doesn't admire, doesn't value. Yes. Okay. For me, when I did my uh, covenant with uh, when I was uh, speaking mm -hmm. to my altar, I said, "I want you to be. I want you to see me as a flower." So when he goes to the wife, he sees the opposite of a flower. <laughs> yes, a rebel. A weed. I, I, I want. I want to be your manager. Uh -huh. Then the wife is uh, a slave. Yes. I, I want you to take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. So when he goes to the wife, it's the opposite of it. Some men don't even know the children is classes. They don't know the children is schools. They don't know they are there, but they they can even give the money, mm. but they. Because of that spell, mm. they don't even know what the children like. Mm -hmm. what, uh, they don't know. They are not involved in their children's lives. Yeah. Yeah, wow. And uh, when, uh, let's say, a family is involved in witchcraft, when I've involved that family, when I've given that spell to that man, there are some things as a wife you're supposed to be watch out of. Sometimes you may see cockroaches <laughs> <laughs> at night at around uh three because uh the uh dark world's hour it's three yeah. yeah so as a christians they uh we are told we are supposed to wake up at 12 to cover our homes mm. if you're a married woman just wake up at 12 to pray to pray so that when somebody is uh doing that when uh, let me use me when i'm doing that to your man i'll, I'll when i come to your man at three there will be a covering. Yeah. When I'm sending the spirit to your home, they won't penetrate because they are covering. Mm -hmm. But Erica, we find that wives don't pray for yeah, their yeah, husband. When, especially when the husband is uh, is so full of love, he comes back with a hamburger, chicken pizza, you know, you, you, don't, you don't even see, you're just happy, you, you know, you, you think everything is okay. Yeah. Most wives react 
they go and pray when things are bad, but they don't know that they should pray ahead of time. Yeah, but uh, and also they don't uh, realize that uh, when uh, the husband is uh, going through that phase, it's not a one day thing. It's a phase which is going like when I start my spell today, today will be good to you, mm -hmm. but the spell is still working on him. On him, yes. But you as a wife, you're, you're not happy. praying for him. You're yes. comfortable. Yeah. Because the man has paid dowry for you, you know. Mm. After because two you're months, the wife, yeah. you're carrying his name, uh -huh. so you're comfortable. After two months, uh, I, uh, I'm still advancing. So he will come, you'll see he has slept outside one day, and then he'll say, it's okay, he will change. He changed. Then after six months, you see like you caught him with a lady, and then he's telling you, I'll change. After seven months, it's coming, and now it's telling you, I'll marry her. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's the time you feel that the women would go now to judge, pray, to pray when but it's too late. through this uh, period to let's say seven months, me as a lady, I've sacrificed in my altar more than you can sacrifice. He has even eaten the liver. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've even, <laughs> you see, like uh, the Tanzania one, if I was to go for the second time, I was supposed to slaughter a goat. How much is a goat? Let's say around fifteen thousand. Yeah, eh? around Maybe 15, you've been told so around a hundred dollars. That is uh, around thirty thousand. And you as a wife, eh? when you go to church for those seven months, if you can look at your whatever you've given your God, the God uh, your altar, the altar which is supposed to stand for you, the altar which is supposed to speak for you. Yeah, speak, speak for, you. for you. It's even less than five thousand because they give a. Uh, they give nothing. Change. They give change. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 50 shillings, yeah. which is like fast it, yes. you know, it stretches itself. Mm. So that's how. Okay. Wow. It's so bad that there's, there's, you know, petrol station, you know, the petrol station attendant when he's, when he, when he receives the money for people who are buying, you know, petrol for their vehicles. He says, Staki Pesa Zakanisa, meaning that he doesn't want, the mm -hmm. church money he does it because it's coins yes. yeah. understand because people don't understand the power of the altar yeah and they don't value the that altar. altar like that they don't value the things of god like they don't value spiritual laws like that yeah. meanwhile in the kingdom of darkness they value spiritual laws and uh i i noticed something that is deeper than just giving because anybody can give according to how they they how according to their income mm -hmm. you know so you find a person even a million is nothing mm -hmm. you can find another person um a hundred thousand is nothing another one ten thousand another a thousand mm -hmm. so depending on on uh, their ability or their level of of income but the the best sacrifice we can give as christians is to offer ourselves unto god if if you're fully dedicated in god and if you give yourself holy unto God uh, for his purpose, your spirit, soul, and body. You're soaked in there in prayer. You, you hate the things of the world. You turn your house and your home into an altar. You, everything around you is for the glory of God. There is no way a witch doctor will have access to your home because your home itself is God's dwelling place. How your, many Christians? But, uh -huh, many Christians have TVs. They are Christians, but they are watching Nigerian movies. From I'm not saying Nigerian movies are bad, but they are watching Hollywood. They are Nigerian movies. They are uh, watching soaps. They are watching secular music. It's Football. a Christian home. They are watching soccer. There is no presence of God in that home. So a demon can can just model into that house and rob you of your everything. A and demon's before, catwalk through the living room. Can catwalk and before you realize <laughs> you're out of that house, your position as a woman, you're supposed to be an intercessor of your home. There's, there's supposed to be order in a home for every woman. The fact that you have all those things, God has blessed you with all those things, let your children know that whatever is in the house is a sacrifice unto the Lord. Your home is an altar, it's a dwelling place. Angels descend and ascend. Look, in, in, in Second Kings, I just want to give this story real quick. In Second Kings, you know, um, the king had gone to inquire whether it's okay to go and fight the Moabites. 
to, and of course the king would inquire of the prophet will we win or will we lose what is god saying god said go ahead go for them i will give the victory to you so they went and fought against the moabites and so the scripture says in second kings 3 from verse 21 and when all the moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them they gathered all that were able to put on armor and upward and stood in the border and they rose up early in the morning and the sun shone upon the water and the moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood and they said this is blood the kings are surely slain and they have smitten one another now therefore moab to the spoil you know move move out let's go get them Verse 24, and when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites so that they fled before them. But they went forward smiting the Moabites even in their country. All right, now see what happens here. So they passed into Moabite country and they're killing the Moabites in their own country. Verse 25, and they beat down the cities and on every good piece of land cast every man his stone and filled it. And they stopped all the wells of water and felled all the good trees. Only in Ker Hariseth left they the stones thereof. Howbeit the slingers went about it and smote it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him seven hundred men that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. And they departed from him and returned to their own land. You see what happened? God had ordered Israel, go and kill them. Go and destroy your enemies. Remove idolatry from the land, you know. Remove that idolatrous pagan nation from the land. But this man went and offered his firstborn son as a sacrifice. It released so much power that the children of Israel went back home left them alone yeah when they were being these people the moabite the moabites were being defeated they were being destroyed they would have all died but the king of moab offered his son so now just imagine that just and the, and the same the same laws basically apply till this day yes and god even understands that and yeshua was that offering that god offered of his own son of his own self really <laughs> and that sacrifice is so high, but even he had to uh, apply the principles of sacrifice hmm. to win, to win just us souls who are willing to, to come to him. Yeah. Now, just look at the kingdom of darkness. They understand the principle of sacrifice. Yes. So if, if a believer does not understand that principle, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. <laughs> a lady came to me with an issue, a pressing issue. And she told me that the husband had been cheating on her. But uh, when it drew her attention, she decided to investigate. And she found out the person because it, it got to a point where he no longer hides. You know, he's now cheating openly. So she started now to do research on the person that the husband is cheating her on with and she she now realized this woman uh, does good makeup she dresses well she does good hair and you know she she now also decided to go to a salon get expensive dresses get good perfume so that she can match the standard of the other woman and she told me that every time she attempted to do that the day she puts the makeup that day she's kicked. The day she puts a, a good dress, that day she's insulted. There's a time she put an expensive hairstyle like this, the slay queen that the man has. And the, and the man embarrassed her and said, look at an old woman dressing like young girls. Yet <laughs> she felt, she thought in her mind that it's the, the reason as to why the man is going out because he's attracted to, to that beautiful hair. But I, you, what you're sharing is making it uh, clear for many women to understand that it goes beyond the appearance. If a person is uh, committed to a strong altar, even if they don't put makeup, even if they cut their hair, even if, if, even if they don't put on expensive dresses and you have the expensive, even if you have the expensive dress, 
it's not about the material thing. We always tell you life is spiritual. And if you understand that life is spiritual, you will know how to handle spiritual matters spiritually. You yeah. can now be able to differentiate between spiritual things and uh, physical things because you cannot deal with a spiritual thing uh, physically. The more you do it, the more the situation worsens. The, the men, in fact, I want you to help these uh, families where um, even men are bewitched, but there are families where um, the, the, the husband is now coming back, claiming the house is uh, disorganized, smelling, everybody's smelling, the woman is ugly, everything is bad in the house, even the food, even if they hired a chef to prepare his food, his food specifically you said there is so much salt he doesn't want to anything to do with the home so explain <laughs> to them what happens because i know those questions are going to come and people are going through these things and they cannot share yeah um as i've said mm. in order for that man to see whatever he's seen mm -hmm. it's the words yes, that the, the lady the slay queen if you can um dig deeper you'll see there's a lady behind that yeah and uh, as a wife i would ask women how much are you committed to your god because mm. right. um, when we when we used to do these things we'll be told to wake up at three i i swear i was uh, i used to set my alarm how many christians do do that how much time do you take with your God? Because I would wake up at three. I would do those rituals. I, I've been told to pray 21, the Lord's Prayer, 21 times. I would make sure I've done it. So, as uh, women, how much time do you give God? What you're saying is, is making sense. My, I saw my grandmother, mm -hmm. the Christian grandmother, when she was cooking, she would pray my mother would do the same. Mm. And she told me, if you're cooking for your family, mm. you pray, mm -hmm. you cook as you're making declarations. My children are bright. My husband is successful. I am loved. I am a good wife. You declare those words as you're cooking. <laughs> so when they are eating, things are happening. They are falling into place. Men, Because you see men, when they get food, they're hungry. He will just grab and eat. And she told me, in, in the event that mm -hmm. you have not cooked, pray for yeah. the food as you're buying. Maybe you have a house help. Uh, she's the one uh, that is uh, cooking. You pray over that food so that even if she cooks the food, it is blessed. So men, especially men who eat everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> this should be a lesson. Because you might be eating that liver liver portion and, and you don't know you don't know why things are going by. Now because, you need deliverance. And you need deli <laughs> deliverance because your stomach is your God. You yeah. cannot control the flesh. The flesh is your boss and the stomach is your God. So you find Go yourself... To the man. Yes. The man that is... That is reliant on his flesh that is a slave to his flesh yeah. because he'll be manipulated in this life yes. so you know one thing they they should know is that the, the altar is a portal mm. between the two dimensions basically yeah. the physical world and there is a spiritual world that is parallel to this physical world hmm. and that phys that spiritual world is far more powerful than this physical world yeah that spiritual world is far more real and there are many dimensions in that in that spiritual world and there are levels of power there's levels of access yeah so an altar connects those two worlds so every time she would go to the altar and she was making declarations on that altar she was communicating and she's programming the future Mm -hmm. So the future is programmable on yeah. either side. And, the, and, and unfortunately, when Adam and Eve partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, all of us entered into a world where good and evil are possible. Instead of just holiness and righteousness, we entered into another dimension where good and evil are now possible. So whoever offers the bigger sacrifice, whoever's at the altar can program. Mm -hmm. So if people live without programming, they live without an altar, they function, therefore, at the mercy of other people's <laughs> altars. And if yeah. they function like that, then they have no control over their lives. And this is why we emphasize the spirituality of life, because whoever is spiritually minded 
The Bible says to the one who is spiritually minded, that is life and peace. But to be only physically minded and unaware of the realities of spirit life, that the Bible calls that death. He said to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you should have your own altar and you don't have to wait until your your man is doing crazy stuff to get into prayer. By the, you, by the time you're getting married, you should know about these things. Yeah, and yeah. you don't want to marry somebody who obviously does not love God, is not a worshiper, is not a priest of the home, is not a prophet of his house. So he doesn't know about the things of God. So you're coming into spiritual confusion. You're marrying spiritual confusion. So if you can and if you're single out there, before you get into any kind of a relationship with any man, first and foremost, you need, you need to get into God's word. You need to know God's word and you need to marry a man who knows God's word because if he doesn't know God's word, he doesn't know the spiritual laws that govern life. Unfortunately. And if he doesn't know those laws, he's an easy victim. Anybody can come and start manipulating him. Yeah. And so you find yourself in tears and you find yourself learning the spiritual laws in tragedy yeah. when it's already late. And unfortunately, many young girls don't have uh, people to look up to when it comes to marriage. They are looking at uh, the likes of, um, uh, who is this lady? I'm forgetting, those socialites, the, the way they display love and marriage and family. Those are the people they are looking up to as uh, their role models. Uh, the Kim Kardashians, the, the, you know how they live their lives with their children. And, so they uh, think that's the way to they, live. Yes. But when they try to follow suit, they find themselves in a ditch. <laughs> yeah. So they don't they don't understand that that life is spiritual. They don't understand that marriage is also spiritual because there is a covenant involved and they don't know how to keep their marriage. They think it's about a wedding dress. Me wearing oh, their dream about marriage is I want to put on that white gown and I want him to put on that best suit in town and we want to use the most expensive cars. They, but they don't know that after that day there's a life that you have started and this life is involving lives and 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 it is also a ministry because marriage is beyond two people now it involves other lives it involves families it involves uh, the people that god brings the friends everybody so as soon as you start any ministry expect warfare and if you're not alert about spiritual matters it's very easy for the enemy to toss you up and down. There are people who are in marriage and they have never seen happiness in that marriage. Like things started going bad from honeymoon all the way through. And there are those who think their marriages are okay only for them to find 20 years after marriage, their wives or husbands bringing children who are younger than their marriage. And that's where sure. you know that the altar was not... Yeah, in a nutshell, the things we're talking about here is priesthood. Yes. This is priesthood. And unfortunately, in many churches, it's not taught. But priesthood is what God called the children of Israel for. He He said, ye shall be a nation of priests unto me. That's what he wanted. He wanted for all of Israel to be a nation of priests and to teach the whole world the ways of God. So even in Christianity or even in the uh, as we follow Christ... This as disciples of Christ. He didn't say you shall be my Christians indeed. He said you shall be my disciples indeed. And a disciple is a disciplined one. So the followers of the Messiah are disciplined ones. They are priests and they, they tend to the altar. And Leviticus 6 says the fire upon the altar shall ever be burning. It shall not go out. So if you are not maintaining the fire upon that altar... And if your altar has no more fire and you can't even remember the last time it had any fire, then you're probably, you're, number one, you're, you're the one we're talking about. <laughs> you're easy prey. You're easy victim. And number two, you must enter into the school of the spirit before it's too late before, for you. Yeah. Before, before evil literally overwhelms you. So, um, yeah, please continue. This, this, is, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is so powerful and yeah. so key. It is a it is a major key, kingdom. And uh, what what advice would you give to those women whose men have been trapped, <laughs> or those men whose wives? Because it's a two way thing. Some men yeah. are also using witchcraft. 
on women? Um, for the women, I would tell them uh, to embrace in prayers. Don't fight your husband. Because you find that um, there's this moment that your husband has come home. Yes, come then, very late. Yes. Okay. And you as a wife, you don't even want the food mm -hmm. just to cuddle him. Where are you coming from? You've come in from your prostitutes. Why and then you stay there? Yes. That moment when you're... Quarreling. Yes. You raise the other altar. Mm -hmm. ah, because it's your flesh yes. only increases the power of darkness. Yes. yes. You yeah. raise the other altar. So instead of him changing, mm. it will become worse. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when we used to use those uh, potions, we were told, me as me, I was given instructions, don't ever make this man mad. Mm. You're supposed to be submissive. Yes. When there is he power comes, in submission. He's, babe, yes. he's my king. He's the king. Ah. Uh, you even kneel. <laughs> Uh huh. Does he get those uh, them. at home? Mm -hmm. When he gets home, he's hey, like, mm -hmm. he finds a uh, <laughs> edge mate. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens. Wow. And um, in order for the dark world, uh, if you want to break that curse, you need to make that man hurt. If I wanted to leave that man, uh, I make him hurt from the heart. Like I can. Create a scenario, he'll find me in a club with yeah. another man. But there are some portions that are so strong. I remember when my grandmother was giving that portion that you, you, you try to hurt him so <laughs> that he goes away and then he still comes. No, that one, yeah, when he, you do that mm. and then you go, you speak, you say, I don't want you again. Yes. It breaks. Mm. But you find it, um, it doesn't just break Immediately. automatic. Yeah. He will go home and then he find the same wife who quarrels him, who calls him names. Yeah. He'll still be coming to you. That's why we are finding so many cases of people who have been killed. They were in a relationship and then somebody they kill is, each other. Yeah, yeah. Because of such things. Yes. Now, you as a woman, instead of fighting with your man, submit. Pray for him. Even if he comes, me when I'll get married, me I'll pray for my husband. Even if he comes home drunk, just hold his hand, pray for him. You'll break that altar. You're right. Whatever he was given in that bar, you've broken it. Mm, you don't insult him and say you're good for nothing. You're useless. I regret being your wife. Being yes. in the flesh will only and, uh, help you. Whoever readily. is monitoring you. You get a cover, you get a shield. They can't penetrate in your home. But if you don't pray for your husbands, they are going to be taken away. And for you, husbands, they are guys. When I went to Tanzania, I went with a guy. He was going for love potions for my sugar mummies. Mm. And for you, husbands, um, I don't know how true it is, but I had a When a man kneels down to pray, the prayers go direct. I had that. Mm. <laughs> because he's the king <laughs> yeah. of the house he's answerable and, to God for the family yes. and I believe so because so even you for you husbands you can be praying for your wives for your kids because I have so many scenarios that even married women are taken they by live, yes. yeah. uh, he, she lives a very successful rich guy mm -hmm. for a small boy yes a small boy who doesn't even have a, a life at the moment even if she doesn't live you find that uh, she would be going there when the husband is not at home mm -hmm. she does her things and then she comes back yeah we also um as husband they should also protect their oh, homes okay wow and then also they should be there for each other yeah. and work as a team because I've noticed that many women who cheat on their husbands, their husbands are very successful. So they become so busy. They are going from meeting to meeting. They are going for appointment to appointment. Uh, the wife is busy. The man is busy. So no no one has time for the other. So in, in the event of, of looking for money, mm -hmm. they forget that there is a family. Yeah. And they also have needs as a couple. So 
the, that's how the enemy comes in and if the woman lands on a, a, a boy who's using love potion the family is broken mm. if a man lands on a woman who is using love potion that's the end of that marriage yeah the bible and, says yeshua spoke a parable on this wise that men are always to, to pray. pray so yes. you have to literally discipline yourself to get to a place where your spirit man is always praying yeah. and even physically like loud always praying continuously why because the devil is always up to something wherever he is whatever he's doing right now he's up to something evil and so and he's always at work against you he yeah. never rests mm -hmm. day nor night so, yeah. you know, you should always pray. And then advice and, for the single men, yeah. because some, some, some men or women get married under pressure. Maybe they were fornicating and a baby comes up, maybe, and he, he's pressured to marry that woman. He doesn't love the woman, but because he impregnated her, the family has come together and forced him to, to marry. What advice would you give those singles? that are trusting God for spouses? Um, let's not get married for the wrong reasons. If you are, let's become Christians and let's wait on the Lord. Because uh, I've seen the families whose foundations are from God. Those families don't break. Yep. Their marriages stand. But uh, we see other families, you can see that... Um, you got married because the lady got pregnant or the lady accepted the guy because the guy has money, you know, mm -hmm. because right now the singles and the youths, they are chasing for a lifestyle. Yes. A social media lifestyle. lifestyle yes. Yeah. That's what they are looking for. And that's why they are finding themselves where I found myself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Social media is putting too much pressure on people to live a life that is not theirs, that they haven't lived, that they haven't arrived at yet. Yeah. They want to be something that they're not. And most of the people on social media anyway are just posting highlights of their life. They're not posting the low times. They don't post, they don't post the real stuff. They just post what looks good. And most of the things they use are rented. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is rented a lot. We saw a lady, you know, she would rent just five minutes inside a private jet. <laughs> to take photos just just for yeah you, you go to the airport you take a you know five minutes private jet you'll rent a limo mm -hmm. yeah you take for it's a photo op yeah. <laughs> you, you take pictures you take videos you put them all over social media people really think you're living the life you know your yeah. your followership goes up you know and it's all fake it till you make it so don't be stressed when you see people in social media think you know and you, and you think that this person is really living large but you don't know what's going on behind the scenes yeah. and if they didn't get where they've gotten by god mm -hmm. through yeshua specifically if they didn't get there through him and by living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god then they're suffering because it is only the blessing of the lord that makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it but if the kingdom of darkness gives you something, every time Satan gives you with his right hand, he's stealing from you with his left. Yeah. And there will be no peace. There will be, there will be sicknesses. There will be diseases. There will be covenants. There will be nightmares. There will be stresses that you have not taken into consideration yet. Yeah, we're going could, to talk could you about tell us about some of those things? Like, yes, you were able to secure these guys. You were getting big clients the first the, before you went to Dar es Salaam. You were able to secure good clients. But could you tell us some of the negative things that would happen? Oh, get sick. You like found every yourself. time. Yeah, every time I'll get ulcers. You were sickly. I, yes. Okay. And then when I get out of the hospital, my son is sick. I wouldn't even enjoy that money. I would drink it because I have I have rejection. I hate myself. When people see me, they see me, they like, uh, they feel I'm okay. Yes. But inside, I have rejection. You know? Uh, when I have those uh, spiritual husbands. Yes. <laughs> not okay, because when you wake up and then there was someone. And then at some times, you will feel them even choking you. Right. Hey. So spirits will yeah. visit you. They're choking you. Would they ever rape you? Okay, it's, you know, 
Yes, uh, for them coming that way, it's yes. not, uh, they didn't ask me if I want. They didn't ask you for your permission, yes. right? They just, they just came because yeah. there's already a covenant. So they, as far as they're concerned, they have a right. What, what your opinion is does not matter. Uh, it doesn't you know? matter. You see, so, and when you were signing up, they didn't tell you about that, did you? No. And did they? sometimes they, you would even experience that before going to a man. So when a man goes in, they will say, there's another man here. See, mm. so yeah. there's a long list of negative things that takes place. It is only the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and he adds no sorrow so. to it. That's the only kind of blessing where there's no sorrow connected to it. But every celebrity you'll see out there, I don't care if it's Kim Kardashian, I don't care if it's Kanye, I don't care if it's Drake or Jay-Z or Beyonce, they are going through hell because Satan does not give anything for free. You will pay dearly. I'm talking about a Beyonce probably sleeping with some, with the CEO of Universal Records, who is, you know, Lucian Grains, an old, dirty man. You know what I mean? But very wealthy and very powerful. And he sees you and you're sexy and he says, I want that one. You have to come. Why? He, he's a billionaire. This guy owns everything. This guy can snap his fingers and that's, that's the end of your career. You understand so she's had to do some filthy repulsive things to get up to the top so when you see these people posing in dubai and how come they, they never pose with the old dirty man that is sponsoring the trip <laughs> they always pose by themselves they never you never the devil will never show you the fine print of the contract yeah he only shows you the high life the highlights the the good the the you know sitting in the back seat of the rolls royce but he does not show you the sicknesses, the diseases. Now you're taking pills. Now you're suffering pain. Now you're being choked to death in, in a dream. <laughs> there's, there's a lady I know, for her, she has a kid, a spiritual kid. Oh, she wow. carried the pregnancy. In real life, when you look at her, she's okay. Mm. But when she sleeps, she knows she's pregnant. And wow. she even went to labor and the kid disappeared. Wow. Yeah. Now at night, she would go breastfeed the kid and then come back. That's the same thing as uh, that uh, girl I, I told you about, the one who was a uh, devil worshiper in the same school I was. Right. She would. Yeah, she had yes. spiritual children. Yes, she had spiritual oh, yeah. children. Oh, yeah. She had four spiritual children. People yes. don't know. The full and implication. And breastfeed them. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the full implication of what is possible spiritually. They don't understand the implication of what takes place during sexual immorality. The, the extent of the sick things that can take place. They, they can take your seed and make something out of it. And that thing that they're making is an abomination. And God never intended it to exist but you're the one who went and volunteered your seed. So you see, there's possibilities in the spirit realm that men have not taken into account. Ladies don't realize these things. All they see is the enticing pull of the lifestyle. You yeah. see, so they'll look at TikTok. They're looking at social media. The enemy knows how to advertise the highlights yeah. and hide the evil. Yeah. We are going to talk about also witchcraft in marriages because... Uh, the husbands and wives are also using marriage uh, witchcraft on each other. You see, God has given us that grace. You know, as wives, we are we are home builders, but wives can also break their homes. So, uh, they are, if 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 the foundation is good, the home will stand. If the uh, the foundation is in Christ Jesus, that home cannot be broken. But again, if you allow the enemy to come in through witchcraft, because your friends will tell you that kind of, of husband to tame him, you need to get some, some spiritual help. And they will take you to other altars, which are not altars of God. Because I remember my grandmother used to give love portions to, to married women to tame their men and to make them be responsible to take care of their children, you know, because uh, some men in the homes don't provide. So... And, and they go out and spend the money with other women. So these wives would go and uh, get love portions to tame these men. And among the things I remember that were disgusting, they would tell them to feed the men on menstrual blood and poop, babies poop. 
they get the poop dry it make it look like curry powder oh. and put it in the in the yes in the man's uh, soup and uh, with herbs and make declarations to bind him to the family I, now now the man is bound if he doesn't want to love the family <laughs> he's now bound to love him <laughs> but they are, they don't know that by doing so even if the man is going to come back he's going to come back but the enemy is going to bring again another problem because the devil cannot solve your problem without bringing another he wants to keep you going there to the altar like she said my grandmother would not give you a permanent solution she would give you something that will solve this problem but again bring another problem so he will come and then they will take the resources so he's there he loves you he's there for the children but now he's 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 crippled financially he cannot support so you go back again and say now he came back everything is okay but again the finances mm-hmm. so they will now uh, prepare some more herbs to bind the man again even further and they will tell you okay if you mix these herbs he he will uh, start now uh, prospering and then you give him the herbs he takes them then another problem comes in so what i'm trying to say is there is no, no solution we can get from the enemy the only solution we can get uh is from god and through prayer there is no shortcut many people don't want to pray they want to be prayed for but you know what you're going through more than the pastor the pastor also has issues to handle so they will promise to pray for you but they may forget they are human beings and they may not even be able to pray for you uh the way you need to be prayed for so the best thing to do is to go on your knees and then pray maybe i would allow her to also share uh, about the married women who also go for love potions <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i've seen that um i've also seen them uh, use the the uh, what do you call it the, um, for the children yeah yes for the children when yes. it dries mm-hmm. yeah he mm-hmm. used that and um at that part it's the moment you uh, a lady will tell you you know when it comes to uh when it goes out there it stops uh functioning, functioning and when you go to your wife it functions but yes. um, when they go out there it just stops even ladies do that yes and that is so common yeah. especially for the young and single guys when you date me and then you hurt me you go and then you you do your things and then you make uh, him not to function yeah and then 20 years in the marriage is not functioning is not even producing children yeah so there yeah. are men out there that have no idea that life is spiritual and if they are living life without knowing these main things one the commandments of god mm-hmm. and two having the faith of yeshua If you don't have these two things you're going to live a life that is lawless. If you are lawless, you're living in a world that can be manipulated at any time. You're living in a world where you can be victimized at any time. Lawlessness is what casts men into hell. Now we are to do two things. One, we are to keep the commandments of God. Two, we are we are to have the faith of Yeshua. So a Christian should ask himself or just any follower of Christ should ask themselves when is the last time you read your bible and began to list the commandments of God and then go through that list one by one to make sure that you're keeping them because if you're keeping them then you know you are in line with his will and you have the faith of Christ because Yeshua himself said if you love me keep my commandments So there's no way that you can live your life just lawless and think that things are going to come into order. Laws are good. Laws help you to foresee whether you will be successful or not. If you are keeping certain laws, you know you will be successful. You know there's an obvious outcome as a result of keeping laws. But as a result of fa- of failing to keep these laws, you know that failure is coming at any moment. You know the enemy can come through at any time. and and hit a lawbreaker as the scripture says he that breaks a hedge a serpent will bite him so whenever that man stepped out of his marriage what happened the serpent was able to bite him and begin to manipulate his life and who knows how much money it cost him 
Mm. <laughs> Who knows how many life. plots of land? Mm. Who knows? And the Bible says, by means of a whorish woman, a man is turned to a piece of bread. Yes. A piece of bread. So if the enemy can use a beautiful face or a handsome man or, you know, anything to make you violate God's commandments, then the enemy has you. Yeah. What defense do you have? So really your integrity lies in your ability to keep his commandments and to maintain the faith of Yeshua. Keep your altar on fire and get God's word and put it in your heart. Meaning that you are to recite the scriptures over and over and over again. Some people are so, you know, sex becomes an, an, an addiction. So you have to burn that addict, addiction with a greater fire. And that greater fire is the fire of prayer. While you're in the place of prayer, burn it there. Because if you don't burn it at the altar, that fire will drive you away from the altar. Strange yeah. fires will pull you away. Huh. So... You break that power at the altar. You recite scriptures such as sin shall not have dominion over me, for I am not under the law, but under grace. Why? You're not just saying those words. You are programming your spirit man. You're programming the events in your life. You memorize the scriptures because he commanded you to do so. And two, because you understand that life is programmable. You can program your life and you can program it with God's word. So that you become obedient to his commandments. And when you do so, the things that he expects begin to show up in your life. Yes. And he has a good plan for all. Oh, his plan is beautiful for your life. Yeah. And people forsake that plan and go after witchcraft. They go after sources. They go following celebrities. Meanwhile, these celebrities are deep in witchcraft. You see? Yeah. And if, if you are a successful young man... You need God even more because you are targeted. You are targeted by the prostitutes. You are targeted by companies. That's why you see a company that is advertising a mattress will show you a small, young, nice-looking, naked woman. You are targeted because they want you to buy that mattress and and fornicate or commit adultery on that mattress. That's the kingdom of darkness. That's the plan. They want, they, when they are promoting alcohol, they will still use a half-naked woman to promote that alcohol because they want you to get your money, go and drink, and spend it on their company. Meanwhile, they are also stealing your energy. They are stealing your destiny. Uh, they, they are going to promote a Benz or a vehicle, any type of car, any brand. They will promote it, but they will be using naked women and naked men. What are they trying to show you? The enemy wants to steal everything, to all the sexuality. resources that God has given you. So if, if you have money, if God has blessed you with those resources, use them for the kingdom and the glory of God. Bible That's says, the only safe <clears throat> place you can be. Bible as, says, Bible says, strong men retain wealth. Yes. It takes strength. Yes. It takes strength to keep the commandments. Hey. It, came, it takes strength to resist the devil. The Bible yes. says, resist the devil and he, he will flee. flee. Yeah. So, um, in First John, he speaks of he he says of, he speaks about how um, the young men have overcome the wicked one. Meaning that spiritually, if you've gone from being a child to being a young man in the spirit realm, spiritually as a believer in Christ, you have overcome the temptations. You have learned the game to where you understand, okay, this is not a natural desire for this woman. There is a spirit involved and it's compelling me to do something that would cause me to step outside of the commandments of God so that the it enemy finished. can get me. Yeah. yeah. So once you learn the game, then you become what the Bible calls a young man. And from that young man, meaning you're, you have become a son. He's calling us to sonship. And then from being a son, you become the next stage is to become a father. Literally, yeah. not so that people can start calling you father, but so that you can begin to bring up others that are young, you know, and to teach them the game. Young men, if you want to be poor, sleep around. If you want you to are be going the big be... fish that can be trapped. <laughs> yeah. So, and, 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 and here's another thing. There's something called sex magic and sex magic is very real. And these yeah. university girls are being taken advantage of when, you know, the big politicians come into town, they pick them up, they're buying them iPhones, they're taking them out there and they offer them 200,000 in a night, 300,000 in a night and tell them to go get their friends and their friends come and they're getting all of this amazing amounts of money, but they don't realize. And a short time later, they begin bleeding 
continuously. They're rotting on the inside. Yeah. They don't know this person that they slept with. He's in the occult. He took something from them. And a lot of them need to realize that there's a better way. That better way is called the kingdom of God. That's why Yeshua was preaching. Everywhere he went, he would preach the kingdom of God. One of the things that people need to know is that you are a spirit. And that you can program your life by daily meditating on God's word. And if you will obey his word and if you will do what is written, it will build you into what he's talking about. It will build you into a man. It will build you into a woman. And it will make you very strong. In the scripture I was quoting in First John, it says, I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. Because they, you see, these young men, they realize the game now. They're like, okay, there are spirits involved and I resist these spirits. Every time I give in to these spirits, I end up losing more than I bargained for. So they learn. So he's saying, I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because you have known the father. So you see, he speaks of three different ranks. Little children, young men, fathers. All right, so the various stages. I have written unto you fathers, verse 14, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I've written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. So you see how he overcame? Because the word of God is in him. And the word teaches you the rules of the game. In Proverbs 5, it talks about how the man who sleeps around, his wealth will be in the house of strangers. Oh, yeah. it's so true. Proverbs 5 is so true. Um, should, I, should, I, should I go through Proverbs 5? Or yes, should I? Yes, please Look, do. Proverbs yeah, please 5 do. is one of the most powerful verses that if you know this, if you know this truth, Yeshua said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Once you know these things, there's some things you don't even need prayer. Once you know the truth, you don't do it. Yes. You won't watch pornography because you know these are Luciferian, Satan, devil worshipers that are, are slaughtering children and offering sacrifices to Molech. Then they go and they do a sex tape. And they put it on the internet and you watch and you start masturbating. And now that those very spirits that were released are attracted to you. You're the one calling them. Because you're created in the image and likeness of God, you can summon spirits. But which one are you summoning? You see? So, Proverbs 5, My son, attend unto my wisdom. Bow your ear to my understanding, that you may regard discretion, and that your lips may keep knowledge. Basically, you're saying, My guy, let me show you the rules of the game. Let me show you how this thing is played. Right? For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Ouch. Lest you should ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that you cannot know them. There's no way that that guy who was leaving his wife to come make it rain on you would have known that at some point you were in a shrine covered in a sheet, inhaling, declaring at an altar, programming his life. He says, you're, he says her ways are movable that you cannot know them. True. He couldn't have known. How is he going to know? The only thing that could have kept him is the commandments of Yah. If he'd have kept God's commandments, he's safe. But once he stepped out, that's it. He's open game. Verse 7, hear me now, therefore, O you children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her, and come not near the door of her house, lest you give your honor unto others and your years unto the cruel. You see, those are the rules of the game. He's telling you, you sleep around, you, 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 come, you sleep outside of your marriage. Oh, you are sharing your wealth with strangers. Your honor is going out the door. He says, your years unto the cruel. So things that you worked hard to get are going like, like the wind, you know? It's just like a breeze. Verse 10, lest strangers be filled with your wealth and your labors be in the house of a stranger. 
Gosh. And you mourn, meaning you weep at the last when your flesh and your body are consumed and say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me like us here at Life is Spiritual. Verse 14. Okay, that part of life is spiritual is not in the verse. (laughs) (laughs) Verse 14. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. You see why he's saying that? It's because spiritually, there's no privacy. Spirits can see what you're doing. Fallen angels can see what you're doing. The angels of heaven can see what you're doing. And God Almighty can see what you're doing. All right. So there's two. There's a congregation watching you, even though physically you might think it's just you and that person in the bedroom by yourselves. But there is a congregation watching. All the world is a stage. Somebody said that. I'm not sure who what poet said that, but they said all the world is a stage. He was speaking spiritually, not just physically. Verse 15. Drink waters out of your own cistern and running waters out of your own well. What is he saying? He's, when he's talking about sex, he's he's saying that basically you are literally drinking this person, <laughs> like like a cistern of water. You know, you are ingesting this person. That person is ingesting you. You are there's such an exchange that you will be f- together forever. Some people used to ask forever, ever. I say forever, ever, ever. You'll be together for spiritually. You'll be together forever. He's telling you to drink waters out of your own cistern and running waters out of your own well, meaning that only sleep with your spouse because the exchange that's taking place there should be blessed of God. You know, your body is 70% water. So there's a spiritual aspect of that water as well. So he's telling you to drink waters only out of your own cistern, not from different, not from different ones. Let your fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. He said, let them be only your own and not strangers with you. Meaning, don't let strangers steal your wealth. Keep it in the family. And and there are people who are wealthy that know these things. They keep it in the family. The ones that are wealthy and they're sleeping around, they're occultists and they're stealing stars, using sex magic to steal stars. He said, let your fountain be blessed. He said, verse 17, let them only be yours Let them only be your own and not strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Your fountain, meaning that your reproductive organs, it produces life. It's a fountain of life. So the same seed that you are placing in that woman is released with energy. And also that same energy will be used to provide for that seed once that child is born. So he's saying, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy you at all times and be thou ravished always with her love. And why will you, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of Yahuwah. And he ponders all his goings. His own iniquities will take the wicked himself, and he will be holden with the cords of his sins. He will die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly or foolishness, he shall go astray. See the rules of the game? So how many men out there don't know these things? So many. Watching music videos, and they want to live the life of a rapper. They live the life of an actor. Watch Hollywood movies. They want to copy paste that lifestyle, violate God's laws. And what men don't know that there are some women also that um, want to keep them trapped. I can look at, for example, I'm giving an example. I can look at a man and know that this man is broke now, but he has a future. I don't want to be with him. I don't see myself with him, but I can trap him. I can get pregnant for this man. When I get pregnant for him, he will be my slave. When he starts shining or he's a, uh, a, a political, uh, he's polit- in a good, uh, in, a, um, in a sensitive job, that's when I'll make him my slave. That's when I'll start making my demands. So they, they trap the man using the, 
the child. So the child is the bead. So every time they see him shining, they say, okay, now give me this amount of money if you want me to, to keep quiet about this. Now give me this amount of money if you don't want me to tell your child. Now give me... So I, I want to advise men not to allow... Uh, themselves to be slaves you know you yes it's your responsibility once once you sleep with somebody and uh, they end up getting pregnant it's your responsibility but again you're not supposed to be a slave to a point that they are telling you if you don't this and this if you don't this and this if you don't that is this the way the enemy operates and many men have ended up some into depression others have lost their careers Others have lost their esteem. Others have lost their marriages. They have lost their jobs because they, are, they have been trapped by the enemy. The way to break free is to, to, to not fear the enemy. Do not fear because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. If you're in Christ, you have nothing to fear from the enemy the other thing i've 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 I, from experience that i know is that the men who are into witchcraft they are controlled to a point that they are separated from their family if you want to know that this man is under a trap or a spell the first thing the the person that is victimizing him will do is to separate him from the people that can help him so this man will be isolated. He, they will move him away from the people that he loves. He will hate his mother. He will hate his father. He will hate everybody that is important in his life to a point that he cannot even help them. He doesn't want them to visit him. He doesn't want to go and visit them. He's, he's so cornered. And the other thing, he lives in fear. He's very scared of himself. Of ev Like the wife just shouts at him, and he responds with fear. You know, commanding him, he will run in fear. He's not himself. A man has, um, a man who in God's image has a will. He can decide. He can say yes. He can say no. He's a leader in, in nature. God created men to be leaders. So he can direct the family. He can speak to the wife and the children. And we are supposed to submit. But if you find a situation where now it's the woman who, who has taken the place of the man. Now the woman is the man of the house. The woman can tell the man, shut up. And the man can't say anything. He goes down and says, I'm sorry. You know, he's very scared of everything. Then you know that that guy is under a spell. He's under a love potion spell. So if you are related to such a person, then you go on your knees and start uh, praying for them on your altar. You start presenting them before God because they need to be liberated. M you find that uh, many people's brothers, many people's uh, fathers, people's uncles are in this bondage, but the family members don't know how to. They are scared of the wife. They are like, ah, from the time that man, from the time our son married that woman, he doesn't want anything to do with us. We don't know. We can't even go and visit our son. They are so scared. Instead of fearing, you need to address it on your altar. You need to start now praying for your son. Like she said that whenever they would go to monitor, they would find when they are monitoring that either the mother is praying for the, for their, for the boy or the wife. So they are, and she had already passed away. Yes. The mother had already passed away. Yes. So her prayers remained. Yes. And were still active. Yes. So it's very important for we, the women, to pray for our children. Pray for your sons. I pray for my sons. Pray for your, for your husband. Pray for your brother. Even, even if your mother died, you, the sister, can pray for your brother. Uh, you pray for your sisters also because now even the witchcraft is, is affecting the women. There are men who are using love potions. There are men who are into the occult and they are initiating these young girls. So you pray. Let's pray for one another and pray without ceasing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should just... Um, uh, actually, it's a warning yes. to women. Mm. When you know that your man has a mistress, don't go and fight that woman. Yeah. Because when you fight her... You've entered you, the flesh. Yes. Yes, physical fight. Mm -hmm. When you fight her, she will go back and she will advance. And then you'll start saying that uh, my kids are performing, but they are not performing. When mm. you attack her, she attacks the kids. Mm. 
fight on your knees. Don't go physical. I've had stories women are telling me the way they fought. Then from there you you see that your your kids were performing very well. Now they are not. You see that uh, your kids now you they are special in the special conditions. They are sickly. Yes. Yes. Because you fought her. Because the moment she gets angry, she, for her she doesn't forgive. Mm-hmm. She goes now and to advance. do something that will hurt you. <laughs> and now she will hurt you and mm. hurt your kids. She'll even hate the, uh, make sure that the in-laws hate Don't you. Don't like the children, yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You know, lady, in fact, when you're fighting for your husband, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Mm. And be filled with the Spirit. In fact, the Bible says, be being filled with the Spirit. It said, yeah. be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled yeah. with yes. the Holy Ghost. All right, so... Be, really, the translations there is be being filled. That means that be being filled, be filling yourself up. It's like how you light up the jiko. You know, you know the charcoal stove? You put the charcoal on top, there's a filter, and then you put paper underneath and you set it on fire and you blow it. You, you, you fan it. You fan the flames. That's what you do in the secret place. You fan the flames. You pray in the Holy Ghost. Put your worship on. Pray in the Holy Ghost until the atmosphere changes. You know, learn to stay there. Learn to dwell there. You know, live there. Don't don't just visit there when it's dangerous because that's the place where you program your life from. So pray until the atmosphere begins to change. You will know when the Spirit of God has come in. Yeah. All right. After he has come in, you've dealt with repentance. You've dealt with bitterness. You've dealt with unforgiveness so that there's nothing bitter in you. There's nothing foul in you. You're not approaching for the wrong reasons. Because the scripture says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in the holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. So the Bible says, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord, meaning that you'll receive the thing that you're asking for. So approach with a clean heart. Go through the, that checklist. Make sure there's no unforgiveness. There's no bitterness. Don't don't go to him seeking vengeance to, for him to strike, you know, um, the, the, the mistress with a bolt of lightning. You know, he's not your assassin. <laughs> All right. So he, he, but he will hear your case. Okay. And if you have a sound case, which is based on God's word, he will definitely hear it. So when the atmosphere changes, you begin to quote certain scriptures. And you will quote the scriptures that have to do with marriage. Genesis 2.24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Yes. You'll be amazed how that scripture will fight for you. You will quote the scriptures in Ephesians 5 that talk about how a man should love his wife. He that loveth his wife loveth himself what are you doing you are reciting the word of god back to god when he sees that he says okay first of all this is somebody who honors my word and then he begins to watch over his word to perform it he's waiting for you to declare it and then he begins to watch over his word and perform it so and be patient during that process Mm. keep on doing it remember yeshua spoke of in luke 18 Verse 1, he said, men ought always to pray. And then he gave the the parable of this woman who was desiring for vengeance <laughs> or justice, really, from a judge. He wouldn't listen to her at first, but she kept on coming. She kept on coming back. And so the ju- even the judge that was an ungodly man, he said, though I fear not God, and neither do I regard anybody. But because this woman keeps on bugging me, you know, <laughs> he said, I'll give her what she wants. So... Press in the place of prayer. Recite God's word. And add to that charity. Yeah. Add to that fastings. Because if you if you do these things and you see nothing's happening, add fasting. And while you're fasting, give to the poor. Give to the poor sacrificially. To those who are suffering, go find a, a widow. Yes. Whose husband yeah. died. It's good you spoke about and the widows. And give to the widow. Yeah. It's good you spoke about the widows because now we are talking about the marriage and the singles. I know somebody is going to say, what about me? You know, what about we, the widows? Uh, one thing I have learned is that uh, when the man who has been your covering 
and your 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 head and your source has gone there is one man who will always be and that is god so you transfer that responsibility to god immediately and tell god now that my husband has left and is not there to cover me because even if a man is not financially stable every woman needs a man in their lives if i say leave me alone and the person doesn't and my man says leave her alone it carries more weight so that is the covering the protection so if you do not have that covering anymore and everybody feels they can attack you because you're vulnerable they want to come and steal the properties they want to come and throw you out they want to come and finish you transfer that responsibility immediately to God and tell God now that so and so is not around to defend me to provide for my children to cover me please be my boss be my god be my husband your word says you're the husband to the widows you're the father to the fatherless so please be the father of my children when your children come to you asking you for provision mommy i want school fees mommy i want food don't tell them don't disturb me your father is no more don't tell them that tell them let us go to our father in heaven and trust him for school fees and trust him for food surely enough god is faithful he will pave a way and he will provide so i just want to encourage every widow and then don't lose hope in yourself you know and also uh people should be sensitive when they are talking to 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 widows for example i counseled one lady Uh, and she came and told me that she was hurt she was pouring out her heart to a minister who was married and the wife found out that this minister had been supporting her financially and the, the wife went and attacked her and said i'm not the one who killed your husband yes i know she was upset with the man giving aid without letting her know but the way she brought it out in, instead of you know it it crushed this woman she felt like she had been broken into pieces you know she was confining in this man because he's a man he's a man of god she's trying to heal she's trying to to stand to raise and this woman because of uh, i don't know the misunderstanding maybe they are having with the husband maybe not trusting each other she came and attacked the woman so we have to be very sensitive not to be used by the enemy to break people we need to be people who build people who encourage and people who support so every widow every uh, man that has lost a wife i just want to encourage you that god is right there and he knows what you're going through and he knows what your children need so he's just waiting for you to present everything to him shift everything the battle report to him those people who are attacking him the way you used to call your husband's number every time people are attacking you every time they are trying to break in into your land try to call god contact him try him he will not fail you instead of relying on men men disappoint when you need them the most they depart but god he said in his word he will never leave you nor forsake you he's waiting for you to come back to him and rely on him totally yeah and um and come to god because you want a relationship with him yeah not just because you're in trouble mm. nobody wants to be used yes nobody wants a gold digger yeah you want a relationship with your father and to learn about him and you want to learn his ways and he has standards his standards are good and his standards will separate you from the pagan world of idolatry his standards will separate you from the ways of hollywood and the culture that it has you know indoctrinated the world with his standard will separate you and make you holy and make you separate unto him and you'll find that that is actually a better world it's a far better world to live in than the than the world of indoctrination that people are programmed with through hollywood and the and and the falsehood of western civilization it is a false world you know? because it is a world that is based on pagan idolatry and godlessness. So when you come to God come because you want a relationship with him, better to come early before you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> not that he will not to deliver you <laughs> when you're in trouble. He's a good father. However, he wants to be loved too. He wants his children to know him. Learn about him. Learn what's his name. Ask yourself if you even know his name. Cuz people will say he's god no god is his title 
That's like Mr. President. Like the president right now in Kenya is Ruto. But, you know, Mr. President is his title. Ruto's his name. So God has a name. What's his name? Do you know? Are you talking to somebody whose name you don't even know? Do you know his commandments? Do you know his requirements? Get to know him. And the way you get to know him is to spend time in prayer and in his word. The way you get to know him is the way you get to know anybody. Spend time. Invest the time. Yeah. I just want to ask her what advice. What advice would you give somebody who is still into that kind of life as a side chick? From your experience, what, what advice? Yeah, I would tell them, um, the wealth, uh, Satan has no inheritance, but the wealth of God has inheritance. And um, I've come to realize that God has it all. All we have to do is to seek He. So it's said in the Bible. Yeah. And um, I'll tell person who is still in, the, in that world, come out. Because um, we have a God of chances. Yes. And He has said in the book of Ephesians that He forgave us. Yeah. He chooses us. So just come out. And uh, when you serve God, he will provide for you. And he will give you what even your kids will inherit. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And a situation where they want to come out, but now there are responsibilities. I know you said it was not easy. It was tough because you have a responsibility you need to take care of this child, you need to, to handle some bills and all that. And they are afraid that if they come out, mm -hmm. they are not going to have that money, the quick money mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> I, won't, I won't lie, but the process of God is slow mm -hmm. and yes. it's long. Mm -hmm. But if you're patient with him, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you dedicate your life to him, uh, you will get away. He will send his angels. And I've seen it in my life. I've not wow. been working mm -hmm. since last year. And I've seen him do it. Wow. Yeah. What's that one scenario, one <laughs> event that happened that you will never forget <laughs> during that world, when you were in that world? Something that you did or something that happened while you were there, that you feel your mind. You, you can never forget it. <laughs> good or bad? Good, whether good, whether, whether bad. Okay, you can start with good and then you can start with bad. Uh, the bad thing that I did is um, that of a meat. It was when I think about it now, I. <laughs> the meat, the river. And then when I think of the person who the ate man it. He enjoyed He really enjoyed <laughs> Yeah. You see, the when you're, oh, but you oh see, that's God. the nature of sin. While, you, while you're living in a life of sin, you think that you're living the good life. Mm -hmm. But you don't know what you don't know. There are things that you do not know that you do not know. Yeah. And that's the problem. That's, that's, that is darkness. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh -huh. So that's the bad thing you never <laughs> forget. <laughs> that was a bad thing. Yeah, but, uh, for that, I feel so bad. And then I, I uh, there's something I would say. Th that time I was going to Tanzania, mm. two days before, I got robbed. Like I was coming out of uh, La Viva. I was living in Kenyatta Road. You know La Viva? Where's that? Spamol. Okay. Kimbo. Right, just right And off. I was going to Kenyatta Road. Now when we were going to service lane, mm -hmm. I was in a border, border, border. That guy... Uh, you were on a bike yes, for uh, our Western audience. Yeah, I was in a bike. So that guy stopped the bike, took my phone, took my ID. And you see, the following day I'm supposed to travel. travel. So when I think about that, I'm like, was God sending his angels to stop me from going? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but... um. The best thing that has happened to me is uh, getting born again and coming out. And yeah. Wow. Hey, I can't add anything to that. <laughs> the best thing that has ever happened to her is becoming born again and getting out. And we would like to give you an opportunity, if you've not given your life to Jesus, to get born again and get out. 
if she got out, you can also get out. Amen. Yeah. So if you're out there and you're tired of being a puppet for devils and living on the edge of hell, because if you live in sin, you know every heartbeat is a heartbeat closer to your last. Every breath you take is a breath closer to your last. Every step you take with your feet is a step closer to your last. One day you will lie down and you will not get up. Hopefully of old age. Yes. <laughs> but you don't know when that yeah. will take place. You know, you might depart tomorrow. And tomorrow is promised to no man. So, and that place called hell is not created for human beings. The place is very real. People go there. And the only future they have to look forward to while they're there is the lake of fire. Yeah. Because all of hell will be taken, cast into the lake of fire. And if you haven't seen documentary number 35, please watch it. Because it describes hell and the lake of fire. And how the lawless ones are cast into that place. Yeshua said, many will come in that day saying, Lord, Lord, Adonai, Adonai. Did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not preach the gospel in your name did we not prophesy in your name he said then will i testify unto them away from me you lawless ones i never knew you meaning that i never put my word in you i was never intimate with you we were never close you never spent time in the secret place i don't know you we are not intimate we're not close who are you you're just using my good name because it's a good name it works anybody can use it but it, it, it takes a person of intimacy. It takes a person of closeness and relationship to actually get to know someone. So he says, away from me, you that work lawlessness. I never knew you. And if you don't know God's commandments, probably have never sat down to list them, you are probably, probably lawless, meaning that you are violating his laws without knowing it. So I would advise you, hey, if you're saved out there, don't, be, don't just assume that everything's cool. List God's laws down. Write them down. How many of you can actually recite the Ten Commandments? Just ten. So if you cannot recite them, if you don't know them, you're just hoping. Just kind of hoping for the best. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's no way to live. That's no way to arrive at the doors of eternity. And you're just hoping. You're just kind of leaving stuff to chance. No, 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 no. List his commandments. Know his expectations. Yeah? That way... You secure, he said, lay hold on eternal life. He didn't just say, you know, guess your way and hope for the best. He said, lay hold of it tightly. So if you want to give your life to Christ or rededicate, just pray these words after me. Say, Father, in the name of Yeshua. Father, in the name of Yeshua. I have heard your word. I have heard your word. I believe that Yeshua. I believe that Yeshua. Gave his life for me. Gave his life for me. On the cross. On the cross. Wash me in his blood. Wash me in his blood. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believed you raised him from the dead. I believe you raised him from the dead. On the third day. On the third day. And now. And now, he's King of Kings, he's King of Kings and, Lord of Lords, and Lord of Lords, Mighty God, Mighty God Everlasting, Father, Everlasting Father. Write my name in the Book of Life and make me a new creature. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me to a Bible-believing church, Bible church where I can learn you. Where I can and learn you and your commandments and, your commandments, and the faith of Yeshua. And the faith of Yeshua. And from now on, and from now on I, belong to you. I belong to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me to a place I can be baptized. Lead me to a place I can be baptized. In water. In water. In Yeshua's name I pray. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are born again. He said, if you shall confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord, Yeshua, you shall be saved. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I have been blessed. And I want to take this opportunity to thank my sister for allowing to share her testimony on LIS platform. We don't take that for granted. Well, saints, we love you, but Jesus loves you more. I remain Erika Mukisakimani, a.k.a. Mama Maisha, or Mami Zion, and Zef. Amen, and amen. And thank you so much for coming. It takes courage come out here and to speak publicly about the things that you did and let me tell you heaven is applauding 
There's so many people out there, they're quick to point fingers, but they have skeletons in their closets. And those skeletons will be brought out yes. <laughs> one day. Yeah. So, um, and, and that takes great courage. So congratulations, kudos to you. I salute you. Amen. And amen. Okay. And so, yes, with those few words, I'm Baba Zion, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and honor and majesty and power from now, henceforth, and forever. Amen. Amen. The Truth About Money by Tim Simon Bamboo Kimani. There is a reason why money and financial intelligence is not taught in schools today. The elites or one percenters don't want masses of humanity to understand certain truths about money. These truths are revealed in this book. Get your copies now and may God bless you as he opens your eyes to understand how to grow, manage and sustain your wealth in Jesus' name.